Have you ever dreamed of starting your own podcast? Well, you can. It's simple, it's easy, and best of all, it's free. By going to anchor.fm, you can start your own podcast today and have your own show up and ready to go. Anchor's graphic user interface is user friendly and you get paid for your content by setting up a Stripe account. Go to anchor.fm. Again, that's anchor.fm and start your podcast today. Welcome to the Living Healthy Podcast, where you can improve your quality of life by making solid and informed decisions. I'm your host, Eddie Randall. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Living Healthy Podcast. I invite you to check out the Living Healthy Podcast store for all the coolest podcast merch. The link will be in the description. The number one thing that the majority of people want to do is to lose weight. Out of the 7 billion people that populate the earth, 2 billion are overweight or are obese. There are proven diets that are replete with foods that are ideal for weight loss, but that's only half of the picture. The other half is exercising or tuning the body in order to burn calories to get the weight off and keep it off. Tonight, I'll be going over some exercises that you can use to lose weight. Tonight's podcast is entitled, The Smart Guide to Ideal Exercises for Weight Loss. Burning Calories Calories They're easy to gain, but hard to lose. In conjunction with dieting, which includes making healthier food choices, exercising is of paramount importance. We're able to lose weight, tone our bodies, and get the physique that we're after. The great thing is you don't need to belong to a gym or invest in thousands of dollars of equipment. While some exercises obviously require some equipment, you don't need to belong to a gym. You can invest within your means for some equipment. You'd be surprised, but you can get similar, the same, or better results than by belonging to a gym. Not that anything is wrong with joining a gym, although some may feel that belonging to a gym allows you to surround yourself with like-minded people, and there there, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You can do that if you want, or you can have an exercise partner. I know that many people have a friend that you diet and exercise with and you both work to motivate each other. Or you can do it on your own and allow the look that you're after to motivate you. You can take a picture of how you used to look when you were thinner and place it on the refrigerator to use as motivation. Or get on the scale every day or every two days to allow you to remember the goal that you're thriving for. There's a female comedian, I don't remember her name, But many years ago, she said, nothing tastes as good as being thin feels. While some may say that's up for debate, we certainly cannot ignore the fact that being overweight increases your chances of developing diabetes and having cardiovascular disease. Now that that has been said, I will talk about how we can exercise to lose weight. Strength training involves any kind of exercise where you would endure resistance. This includes either weightlifting or doing push-ups and things of that nature. The resistance builds strength, builds muscles, builds endurance, and burns calories. When you build muscle, you burn fat, although muscle weighs more than fat. Continuous repetitions of dedicated strength training exercises will drastically reduce fat and replace it with toned, lean muscle. The muscles are already there. You just have to bring them out by burning the fat. The calories lost will improve lung capacity, cardiovascular health, as well as reducing your A1C. Weightlifting is within the class of strength training exercises. The difference is that this involves using weights or machines exclusively. Exercises. As far as the exercises, I'll be discussing individual exercises as well as classes of exercises. I'll talk about the exercise as a whole, the body parts that will be impacted, the duration, as well as the calories burned. As examples, I'll touch on everything from weightlifting, jogging, to tai chi, and yoga. 
This is a comprehensive approach to exercise as all exercises burn fat and calories. I'm taking into account the young, the old, and everyone in between. There's something that everyone can do based on your age, level of fitness, and ability. As a disclaimer, before you do anything, talk with your PCP to let he or she know what you're doing. Now let's begin. Warming up. Before you attempt any exercise, make sure you stretch and get warmed up. There are many injuries that can occur if you are not properly warmed up. This can be anything from muscle pull, cramps, and in some cases even muscle tears. A proper warm-up can include bending over and touching your toes, doing leg and arm stretches, rotating your neck, rotating your hips, jogging in place, as well as doing arm and knee bends. Jump rope is an age-old exercise which originated back in ancient Egypt. Thousands of years later, it became associated with young girls in pigtails skipping jump rope with their friends in their neighborhoods. It's been long used by people seeking to exercise and is even a common practice of many professional athletes. It turns out that it is an incredible way to get into shape and to boost your cardio. This exercise builds forearm as well as hand grip strength. Your core, abdominal muscles, calves, and thighs are also built up by using this exercise. Any strenuous exercise will also improve cardiovascular health, so your lungs and heart will be strengthened and continuing this exercise builds endurance. Weight loss for this exercise, as well as all exercises, depends on some factors. They are revolutions of this exercise and your weight. I'm going to pick two weights, one for women and one for men as examples. If you can perform 100 to 120 revolutions per minute and keep that steady pace for 20 minutes and do this at least three times a week, then you can see the weight loss. For a woman that weighs 145 pounds, she can burn between 180 to 250 calories a day. A 250 pound man can burn between 325 to 425 calories per day. Running is one of the more popular exercises and for obvious reasons. It's also one of the more simpler and easier exercises to perform. Just make sure you do some research and get some very good running shoes as the shoe really does make the difference. This exercise will strengthen your ankles and calves. Your thighs and butt will also get toned, firm, and a little bigger as those are the primary muscles churning and producing the rhythm of the exercise. Your core and abdominal muscles will be strengthened in addition to optimizing your cardiovascular system. There are smart watches or apps for your phone that you can use to keep track of your progress. So to get accurate results, it's suggested to invest in one or the other. For women, if you run and keep a steady pace for about 12 minutes per mile and weigh 145 pounds, you'll burn around 270 to 290 calories. If you are a man, at around 250 pounds, you will burn around 470 to 500 calories. Jogging is a lower impact version of running. The same body parts are impacted, so I will not go over them again. A 145 pound woman will burn about 240 to 255 calories if she jogs for 30 minutes at a steady pace. A man at 250 pounds will burn about 400 to 420 calories. Treadmills are a great piece of equipment that can offer different levels of resistance and workout programs. They affect the same body parts as running and jogging. Treadmills tend to be pricey and can be expensive to fix when they break down. However, they are an ideal alternative to running and jogging outdoors, especially when it rains or if it's freezing outside, or if you plan on working out during the summer months. They also come in handy if you work all day and prefer the safety of your home to get a quick jog in before showering and going to bed. Nevertheless, they are a significant way to burn calories. The many programs and factors, i.e. gradient selected, will affect the number of calories burned. On average, a 145 pound woman can burn about 270 calories and a 250 a uh, pound man can burn about 470 calories. Walking. Walking is something we can do to lose weight. 
the impact is not as intense as other methods and the calorie loss will not be that huge, but it is a very simple thing that mostly everyone can do. This is especially in regard to those who have heart conditions or suffer from severe back pain or arthritis. Some may have to walk more often because that may be their main form of transportation. This is often the case in large cities like New York. Some may say that walking to lose weight is a waste of time or not worth the effort. However, nothing could be further from the truth. The body parts most affected are the quadriceps, hamstrings, calves, and ankles. Overall benefits can be increased circulation, better cardiovascular health, stronger bones, lower cholesterol, and a slimmer waist, and as well as toned legs. You can walk alone or with a friend. If there's a trail or park near where you live, then this would be the ideal environment. You can also incorporate walking into your daily life to burn off some extra calories. You can take the stairs at work instead of the elevator. You can also park in the last spot in the parking lot far from the store or work in order to walk more. When walking, a 145 pound woman can expect to lose 230 calories walking for 60 minutes a day and a 250 pound man can expect to lose around 380 calories in the same duration. Keep in mind that results will vary based on the level of walking and distance. You can have a brisk walk, moderate walk, or pace. As long as you have a pace, you will shed the excess calories. Swimming. Much like running and jogging, swimming is an exercise that includes the whole body. You can literally tone all your muscles while drastically improving cardiovascular health. Swimming does have limitations. Unless you have access to a personal pool, pool at an exercise facility, or a body of water, you may not be able to do it. If you have access and you want to do it, then I recommend you go for it. Depending on the intensity and duration of your swim, you can stand to shed significant calories. A 145 pound woman who swims for 30 minutes a day can burn anywhere from 280 to 300, calorie, 300 uh, calories. A 250 pound man who swims for 30 minutes a day can burn anywhere from 475 to 500 calories. This is one of the primary exercises that can burn a major amount of calories. Push-ups and weight loss are seldom used in the same sentence. However, doing push-ups can help increase muscle mass in the arms, shoulders, chest, and core while shedding fat. This exercise can be done safely and effectively at a rapid pace. As with all weight training, a steady pace and repetition will yield results. If you can do 100 push-ups a day, or five reps of 20, that'll be ideal to help to shed some excess calories. Granted, depending on your current fitness level, you'd have to build up to the endurance, build up your endurance rather, to do this. You may want to start out doing just 15 push-ups the first day, and then a few days later, as your muscles adjust, you can do two reps and then build up to three. When you're able to do three reps per day, gradually work yourself up until you're doing 100 per day, which includes five reps of 20. You want to be able to build your tolerance so you're able to do 100 push-ups in 5 minutes. A woman can expect to burn about 25 calories per 100 push-ups and men can expect to burn about 40 calories. This is not a high impact, but it is an exercise that can burn calories and tone your body and build strength and endurance. As your strength grows, so can the number of push-ups and the amount of calories burned. Crunches these are an ideal exercise that can work on burning stomach fat, building and toning abs, building pectorals, and tightening breasts. Crunches may be difficult to do if you suffer from back issues, so you will want to know what you can and can't do in order to not injure yourself. As with push-ups, you'll want to start off slow and get your body used to doing crunches. This may take a couple of weeks or longer depending on your age, uh, health history, and level of fitness. Once your body is used to doing them, then your goal would be to accomplish on average of 300 uh, crunches in 10 minutes. A 145 pound woman can expect to lose about 65 calories. A 250 pound man can expect to burn about 100 calories. Uh, Sit-ups are very similar to crunches and you can expect to burn about the same amount of calories. Some may find it difficult to keep your feet stationary while doing crunches. 
There are exercise benches you can use or you can invest in some 5 to 10 pound ankle weights to assist you. Cycling. Now this is a fantastic exercise that improves overall health and improves your cardiovascular system. Whether you're on a bike trail or on a stationary bike, um, you stand to burn significant calories. Cycling drastically benefits your legs, stomach, and tones your arms. If you choose a bike, you will have the pleasure of experiencing nature and the great outdoors, not to mention all the fresh air and sunshine. If you choose a stationary bike, you'll miss out on nature, but you'll be able to ride whenever you want, rain or shine, even when it's freezing outside or during a very hot and humid summer day. A 145-pound woman who cycles moderately for 30 minutes can expect to burn about 280 calories. A 250-pound man who cycles moderately for 30 minutes can expect to burn about 480 calories. Next, I will be discussing weightlifting in regard to burning calories. Typically, people don't think of lifting weights in regard to weight loss. It's more associated with getting ripped or sculpting your body. For all, it is about getting your body fit and in shape, which improves your health and confidence. As an added benefit for men, Weightlifting builds a physique with shapely strong arms and a chest that women will adore and other men will respect. As an added benefit for women, weightlifting builds a physique with a shapely core that men will notice and other women will admire. Keep in mind, you shouldn't want to improve your health just to impress people. You should do it for yourself. Just remember, we all age and our looks change. This is because what we look like is not important, or it's not the most important thing, I should say. What is most important is our character and how we treat others. Just know that weightlifting can only do so much as you won't lose a drastic amount in comparison to other exercises like running. But it is effective and you can get the added benefit of developing and strengthening your muscles. You have to be careful in selecting the correct weights to start with. You shouldn't go for the heaviest things out there right off the bat. The key is to select weights that you can do 10 to 15 reps with moderate difficulty. Going beyond that, you should be able to lift at least one more without feeling like you're going to drop or pass out. In addition, you'll spend more time weightlifting and breaking in between sets. Uh, Your break can be anything from two minutes or more. This depends on your current fitness, age, and overall health. Arm curls. Although this is strength training, you get the benefit of sculpting your upper body and arms. Arm curls work the biceps, deltoids, brachials, and wrists. A 145-pound woman can expect to burn 37 calories over a 10-minute period. A 250-pound man can expect to burn about 60 calories over the same period. The bench press. Now, this is another great exercise that affects the deltoids, pectorals, and triceps. It's a fantastic exercise to complete your upper body strength. Over a 45-minute period of weightlifting, which may actually be an hour or less total, including breaks between sets, um, will accumulate to approximately 155 calories burned for a 145-pound woman. And over the same time frame for a 250-pound man, it can be expected to uh, that he would burn rather 270 calories. Squats. Now, this exercise can be done with and without weights. The weights typically used are dumbbells or barbell. Squats mostly affect the glutes, quadriceps, hamstrings, and calves. There are many variations of this exercise out there. Most women try to uh, a squat exercise to shape and tone their backside, while most men try a squat exercise to shape and tone their legs. Whatever reason you do it for, just know that many athletes use this exercise as it's great for the back and lower body and can increase leg muscle mass. You work on centering the barbell behind your neck or with the dumbbells in each hand or a single dumbbell. And depending on your level of physical health and age, you can do squats a bit more quickly as your lower legs and core are doing the majority of the work. The calories burned are as follows. A 145-pound woman can burn anywhere between 270 to 280 calories over a 40-minute period. A 250-pound man can expect to burn 470 to 480 calories over the same period.
I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for supporting the podcast. The Living Healthy Podcast is listed on many platforms, including Anchor, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Bullhorn, and many others. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. And don't forget to check out the Living Healthy Podcast channel on YouTube. Also, if you have any questions or would like me to discuss a particular topic or you'd like to be a guest on the show, please contact me at livinghealthylivinghealthy at gmail.com. Next, I will discuss Pilates. This is a very interesting whole body exercise. It was created by a German physical trainer named Joseph Pilates. He created the exercise to help soldiers returning from war as a way to help them to rehabilitate from their injuries. It is a low impact exercise focused on strengthening and toning your whole body. Pilates burns calories, makes you more flexible, and improves your core strength. I'm just going to cover some of the basic exercises that anyone can do. There are many different exercises such as the pelvic curl, chest lift, spine twist, roll up, leg circles, and the hundred. The pelvic curl involves lying on your back with your knees about a fist apart. Leave a little space under your back while resting your arms flat on the ground. Breathe in while slowly drawing your stomach muscles in. Breathe out, lifting your tailbone and spine off the mat. Breathe in, and as you exhale, reverse the move by slowly lowering your spine and tailbone back down to the mat. Chest lifts. These are like doing crunches. You'd put your hands behind your head, bend your knees, and keep your legs together. Inhale, then exhale as you lift your head, neck, and chest. When the top of your shoulder blades leave the mat, inhale and then exhale as you lower your head. Spine twists are the next exercise. You simply lie down on your back with your arms stretched out wide at your side with your palms facing up. You bring your legs up and bend your knees as if you're sitting in a chair and slightly point your toes. Arch your back while keeping your scapulas flat on the ground. Then inhale and rotate your knees to the left, exhale as you come to the starting position, inhale as you rotate to the left, exhale as you come back to the starting position. Continue to do this until your reps are complete. Leg circles are the next exercise. Your upper body would be in the same position as if you were doing spine twists. You'd lay down on your back with your arms stretched out wide and your palms would be up. Allow one leg to remain stationary. Extend your foot and point your toes straight out. With your other leg, raise it straight up in the air, making sure that the bottom of your foot is parallel with your body. Inhale. Then rotate the leg as if you are outlining a huge circle. Exhale and switch legs when the reps are completed. The final Pilates exercise I will cover is called the 100. You would lie down and place your body in a 45 degree angle. With your legs together, elevated with the toes extended, lift your back off the ground and bring your arms up off of the ground and extend them alongside of your body. You would pump your arms up and down while inhaling and exhaling simultaneously. Inhale five times quickly and exhale five times quickly while moving your arms. Do this continuously for uh, 10 times. This is why it's called the 100. For a woman at 145 pounds doing general Pilates for an hour, she can burn about 210 calories. For a man at 250 pounds exercising for the same duration, he can expect to burn around 350 calories. As I mentioned earlier, these are only a few of the many, many exercises within Pilates that one can do. I'm simply touching on a few for time and practicality. Yoga is another fascinating exercise which involves balance, strength, and flexibility. Like Pilates, it involves flexibility and breathing. Yoga originated in ancient India, and the word literally means to yoke or bring together. 
The goal of yoga is to allow the mind and body to become one and aware of their own nature and to not become attached to worldly possessions. Regardless of why you may want to practice yoga, there is no getting around that it reduces stress, increases flexibility, strength, and can help you lose weight. Now for yoga, you can do each pose anywhere from 10 to 20 or 30 seconds. Additionally, you can do each pose for one to three breaths. Overall, you want to do these exercises for 45 minutes to an hour. Depending on the type of yoga you're doing, as well as your overall health and physical strength, I'm going to focus on just a few yoga exercises that anyone can do. Before I start listing them, I want you to know that there are yoga poses that you can use to transition from one pose to the next. I'm not a yoga expert, but the first pose I am covering can be used as a starting point and is commonly used as a resting point and or transition point from one pose to the next. The child's pose or balasana is one of the most common poses. This can be a starting point and can also serve as a resting point in between exercises. You would start with your knees on the ground and lay forward, extending your arms out straight, stretching your back and arms straight out ahead of you. Then lower your head and allow your forehead to touch the ground. You know when you watch those old movies and you see a tribe on their knees worshiping a deity? That is what this pose is supposed to look like. Um, except instead of going up and down, you stay in that one position. This pose stretches the back and upper body. Plank pose, or falakasana, is similar to the starting point for beginning push-ups. Some people go down on their elbows for this pose. However, select the method that best suits you. This move strengthens your forearms, stomach, and legs. Chaturanga Dandasana aka the four limb staff pose, which resembles the lowered position when you're doing a push up. Now in this position, you would stay in that lowered position. It strengthens your legs, core, arms, shoulders, and chest. This is also considered a good move to master if you plan on doing more advanced yoga moves like handstands. Tree pose or Virikshasana is when you would put your hands together as if you were going to pray. While standing on one leg, you'd bend your, the knee of your other leg and place the bottom of your foot against the inner thigh of the leg you're using to stand on. This move strengthens your ankles, legs, stomach, and spine. It also helps to build balance, which is necessary for more advanced yoga moves. Downward Facing Dog, or Adho Maka Savanasana, is when you would stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Then you would bend over, keeping your legs straight, and place your palms face down on the ground in front of you. This pose kind of resembles an orange safety cone. This move strengthens your shoulders and your back. In addition, it stretches your legs and hamstrings. Warrior One, or Vira Bahadrasana One, can be transitioned to via the downward facing dog pose that I just mentioned. In downward facing dog, um, you would be bent at the waist, leaning forward with your feet flat on the ground and both hands flat out in front of you on the ground, palms down. From that position, you would put your right foot flat on the ground in between both hands that are flat on the ground. Allow your left heel to go back and behind you to give your body stability. Then raise both hands to the sky, arching your back and pushing out your pelvis. You can repeat the same pose by putting the left foot forward and the right heel will, will be the one that goes back for stability. Warrior 2, Ovira Bahadrasana 2, can be accomplished as well by transitioning from the downward dog. Warrior 2 is similar to Warrior 1. The difference is that you would stretch out your right arm in front of you and stretch out your left arm behind you. You would repeat this exercise with your left arm stretched out in front of you and your right arm stretched out behind you. These exercises are great for opening up the chest and breathing. In addition, they strengthen the back, the legs, thighs, and arms. Not to mention that they also stretch out the calves, hamstrings, back, and neck. 
When exercising for one hour by using these yoga exercises and other yoga exercises, a 145 pound woman can expect to burn about 170 calories. A 250 pound man exercising for the same duration can expect to burn about 280 calories. Tai Chi is the next form of exercise. It is also low impact. However, this exercise targets the entire body as the body is in continuous motion as each exercise flows into the other. As with other exercises, Tai Chi can build stamina, flexibility, muscle strength, and balance. It is an ancient Chinese martial art, and every move serves a purpose in combat application. As far as exercise, even though you will not burn massive amounts of calories in comparison to other exercises I mentioned, I'm including Tai Chi because I want to include everyone. Anyone can perform Tai Chi. This would include those suffering from back issues, neck knee issues, uh, arthritis, and or the elderly. Tai Chi is not just a simple exercise. It is replete with very advanced moves that come with time, practice, discipline, and stamina. I'm going to just briefly cover some basic exercises um, from a beginner's perspective. A basic exercise would be pouring. Pouring is standing with your feet shoulder width apart and putting your weight on one leg while taking a few deep breaths. Then you would switch to the other leg and repeat the same exercise. Kicking. Now there are numerous kicks in Tai Chi. For this one, you would stand with your feet shoulder width apart. With your right foot, step forward and plant the foot with the toes facing out in front of you. While doing this, you would pivot the ball of your foot so your foot is turned slightly outward away from your body. Then you'd raise your left foot up, bending your knee while balancing on your right foot. Then extend your left foot slowly in a kicking motion. Then slowly bring the foot back down. When you complete that move, you would pivot on the heel to allow your left foot to point in front and out in front of you and then complete the same kick with the right foot. Some people may not be convinced that this is a suitable exercise or effective way to lose weight. Trust me, it is. I just listed some basic moves, but Tai Chi is a very advanced martial art. When you see people that have been doing this for months or even years, you will understand and appreciate this exercise and you will also see its benefits and effectiveness. That being said, you would need to do this for at least four months to start to reap the benefits. At a beginner level, for an hour of this exercise, a 145 pound woman would burn just about 100 calories. For a 250 pound man, he would burn approximately 180 calories. At an advanced level, a 145 pound woman would burn 210 calories and a 250 pound man would burn about 360 calories. Bar is another form of exercise and is focused on muscle endurance. Many women have compared bar to ballet classes that they've taken. This mostly happens in group settings, but you can learn more about bar from videos and articles that go into detail online. Essentially, it boils down to holding your body still while contracting a specific set of muscles. It is a total body workout that focuses on arms, stomach, glutes, hips, and thighs. As with Tai Chi, I'm going to mention just a few of the simple moves that are part of bar. Plie. Now, plie means to bend, and that move is usually the very first move made as it allows you to stretch your muscles to prepare for the workout. In first position, you'd put your heels together like how Dorothy clicked her heels in The Wizard of Oz. Then, while keeping your head and spine straight, you bend your knees, making a diamond shape. Then, in second position, your feet would be spaced further apart, expanding the legs further and bending the knees. Badament tendu means to stretch, and this is the next exercise. You would extend your foot with the toes straight out and your knee turned out away from your body, and you touch the ground in front of you without putting any weight on it. You can do this in first, second, and third position, etc. Run de jambe, which means around the leg. Now this is the next exercise, and you'd start off with the tendu that I just mentioned, 
and think of it as drawing a capital D on the floor with the tip of your toes. Start with the foot behind you, bringing it to the front and then circling back to where your leg is behind you at the starting position. Grand battement is the next exercise and you'd start off with the tendu, but your foot would be in front of you. Then lift the foot like you're going to kick and then bring it back down to the starting position. Most women who take ballet or bar are just below 100 pounds up to 130 pounds. That doesn't mean if you weigh more, you won't be able to do this. Um, I'm bringing this up because of the calculation of the calories burned. This is due to several factors, and most of all, including your weight. From a beginner's standpoint, some women can burn 100 calories up to 150 calories per hour. For high-intensity, high-level workouts, as much as 500 calories or more can be burned per hour. The next form of exercise is Qigong, or life force energy. Now this stems from ancient Chinese medicine and martial arts. The goal was to harness and strengthen the mind, body, and soul. The original premise was that each exercise can target a particular organ of the body. Whether you do it for that reason or not, one thing that it does is it does strengthen the body and although low impact, it helps to burn calories. This involves deep breathing, meditation, and slow calculated movements. The body parts that are affected are actually the entire body. This exercise focuses on balance, which builds muscular strength. In addition, stress and depression are target areas as the rhythmic breathing allows for a calm mental state. As with Tai Chi, this is a low impact exercise that anyone can do, especially those suffering from particular issues. Some basic Qigong exercises include arm swings, standing with your feet shoulder length apart, slowly begin to swing your upper torso side to side, allowing your arms to gently swing freely. Your arms will make contact with your back and stomach. This loosens you up and prepares you for other exercises. Next is shaking. With your feet planted firmly, gently bounce on your feet without taking them off the ground. While doing this, rotate your shoulders while allowing your arms to flow freely. If you watch NFL football, you may notice some players doing a version of this when they first run out onto the field before the game, or when they've taken a big hit and you hear the announcer say, they're clearing the cobwebs. Next is bear turns. Stand with your legs spread wide on either side of you. Bend your knees, take both arms, bend them at the elbows as if you're carrying a tray on each hand. Keep your hands at shoulder height, inhale, then turn your waist to the right and exhale. Come back to the center, inhale, turn to the left and exhale. This relieves tension on the lower back and stimulates the kidneys and adrenal glands. Open the flow is next. Inhale and act as if your arms are floating. Bring them straight up in front of you, palms down. Then gently bend your elbow. Exhale and allow your hands to come back down. Inhale and repeat the exercise. At one hour of beginner qigong, a 145-pound woman can burn 100 calories. Also at the beginner level, a 250-pound man can burn 179 calories. At advanced levels of Qigong, a 145-pound woman can burn 208 calories and a 250-pound man can burn 358 calories. Pain after exercise. What am I feeling? As I had mentioned earlier, it is vital to stretch and prepare the body to do any kind of exercise, no matter how low impact it may be. Everyone has heard the term, feel the burn, especially in regard to high impact or heavy lifting exercises. You can feel this way at any time, but more or less the day after exercising. That's why it's important to not work out every single day to allow your body to rest or if you're going to work out, use an exercise routine that does not target the same muscle groups that you worked on the day before. When you're exercising, there is a demand that's put on your body to produce more energy. 
It was believed initially that the soreness you felt was due to a buildup of lactic acid. In fact, what we feel is the acidic environment that is created in the body along with byproducts of muscle metabolism. Muscles are rebuilding and repairing themselves and the soreness you feel is the body signaling for this. The repairs begin and this is when muscles become bigger and to accommodate for the muscle gain, the bones become bigger and stronger as well. That's going to do it for episode 10 of season 2 of the Living Healthy Podcast. As always, thank you for your continued support. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And remember, living healthy creates a better you.